at the end of the 19th century in the country of Brazil, after abolishing the slavery and with increasing coffee production, Brazil had increasing needs for immigrants' workforce. This coincided with Japan beginning to open and modernize itself after being a closed feudal country and long isolation for centuries. The Japanese government stimulated the emigration of some of its people, initially to Hawaii and then to the US, Canada, and Peru. However, at the beginning of the 20th century, the governments of Brazil and Japan made an agreement to bring Japanese workers for coffee farms in Brazil. The first immigrants, around 790 Japanese, came here in 1908 on the Kasatu Maru. Majority of these Japanese were farmers. It was a convention between the Japanese government agency and the Sao Paulo state government that some state-owned land would be distributed to the Japanese immigrants. It was a project to settle Japanese immigrants to this region. These immigrants learned through the advertisements in Japan that here in Brazil, good land was available and they could make a lot of money by farming. Some of them arrived at the Santos Port, Brazil in 1917 by the ferry Hakatamaru. They came here with the idea in mind that they would become rich here and go back to Japan. After identifying the lot, they went there and they were dismayed. They were a bit discouraged as nothing was there. They were practically in the middle of the forest. After choosing the lot, they made temporary barracks and started their labor. The first thing they did was to clear and burn the rainforest. They saw everybody was planting rice and they started to plant something else. They tried to raise silkworm, they planted vegetables, fruits, and sugar cane too. Obviously, every immigrant went through hardships. When the Japanese started to live off well, they started to pay more attention to the education. When they started the school, there was no Brazilian teachers but only had Japanese teachers. They were not licensed teachers either and had no diploma to be professors of Japanese. Nevertheless, who could speak and read Japanese gave lessons to Japanese settlers' children who wanted to learn. So during three years, it worked only in Japanese. However, when the city government came, they noticed the efforts to educate the immigrants. They donated a school building and the state government of Sao Paulo sent professors to teach Portuguese. The Japanese cared a lot for their culture, so they continued to practice their music, sports, and arts. They performed sports and obstacle courses. They liked all sorts of sports, such as baseball, athletics, and soccer. But all their efforts to build a better community and to adapt in Brazil ended when the World War II began. No more sports, no more association, no more education, nothing anymore. During the war, they went through hardship for exports. The business and trade failed badly, and their living was changed for the worse. There was a huge setback. There was incalculable damage on the Japanese community of immigrants. There were some federal laws they had to obey. The Japanese were giving classes at the school, and the government gave an order to stop. Otherwise, everybody would have been arrested. Japanese newspapers and teaching the Japanese language in schools were banned, leaving Portuguese as the only option for Japanese descendants. The situation was so tough for them, it was forbidden for three to four Japanese to stay together in the street talking. Public gathering was not allowed. People's dreams came to a game over. The Japanese Brazilian community was strongly marked by restrictive measures when Brazil declared the war against Japan in August 1942. Japanese Brazilians could not travel the country without safe conduct issued by the police. Over 200 Japanese schools were closed and radio equipment was seized to prevent transmissions on shortwave from Japan. The Japanese had a new thinking, saying that they didn't want to go back to Japan. Some of them had a thought in their minds, we will stay here in Brazil and die here. So in 1947, a society among Brazilians and the Japanese was founded as a way to strengthen their relationship. The orientation to the children was, they would need to study as a warrant for the future. And with that, 
they would need to go by all means to university and get the higher education. They started to study in the city, went to university in Sao Paulo. The Japanese community was quite united at that time. Since 1950, a new migration process started. They had successes in terms of Japanese communities farming. The main industries were potato, raisin, and tea. In the 1970s, Japan became one of the richest countries in the world, synonymous with modernity and progress. In the same period, Japanese Brazilians achieved a great cultural and economic success. Today, there are around 1.6 million Japanese descendants living here in Brazil, making it the biggest community of Japanese descendants outside of Japan. Nowadays, Japanese descendants spread into the whole of Brazil, most of which are found in the state of Sao Paulo. The Japanese were able to overcome the difficulties along the years and drastically improve their lives through hard work and education.